Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video on one of the specific functions of an HTX powered radio. It's aimed at those of you that are relatively new to HTX, might be coming to HTX from FreeSky, Fataba, Spectrum, or maybe you're brand new to the hobby. Now there are links below to the rest of the videos in the series, as well as more advanced stuff as well. Don't forget you can find content by just looking for the thing you're interested in and adding Painless360 to your search term here on YouTube. So let's jump on the bench and let's talk about the topic for today. This time we're going to be talking about something called flight mode. Now flight mode is something that appears quite early on in the list and unless you are using things where you might want to use different trims at different times of the model or maybe you want to have a specific thing displayed on the screen about which flight mode you're in or have things like be able to set global variables that then change values as you fly around, you're not probably going to use it. Now, this time, rather than navigate it through on the radio, I'm actually going to show you it in HTX Companion. It's a little bit easier to explain it. So let's jump on the computer. You can download HTX Companion and I'll do a separate video about it. So don't get too worked up about the fact that we're using something we haven't looked at a lot in the series yet. But this is a great little program that allows you to copy information to and from a radio. You can set up models here. You can have models sent from your friends and copy them onto your radio. You can back things up. It's great. But for today, all I've done is I've just created a quick little model and this is going to allow us to set everything up. It's a slightly nicer way to look at things like flight mode. Let's give the model a name and then we'll remember it. And you can see here that all these tabs at the top are the same as the tabs that you would see going through the radio and flight modes is here. Now, quick tour of these screens. And again, all this information is available via the menus on the radio, but I just think it's not quite as cute as doing it through here. So the flight mode zero is the default one. That's the one that's running all the time on the radio. If you don't use flight modes, you probably never come and mess around with this thing and then you have the option to change into other flight modes and assign a switch that will allow you to flick between them so you, by default flight mode zero is going to be on and if you never do anything about it it's never going to change however flight modes one to eight are selectable on switches or via logical switches if you want to do it that way now there's a number of things in here, three basic things that you would use flight modes for. The first is that you can give a flight mode a name. So we have might have normal, we might have soaring, we might have something like um, in flight mode two, we might have something like crow, and you'll notice the names are appearing at the top as I mess around. And we might be, we could set it up so each of those is selected via a switch, and that would be how we would flick between them. Why would you want to do it that way? Well, we'll get onto that as the last thing in the video. Let's go back to flight mode zero with normal, which is the one. First of all, we actually have the trim settings. Each of these can either have the same trims and use the trim um, from flight mode zero, or you can set it to have trim disabled or use its own trim or actually have an offset. So we could set it so that in soaring, we have its own trim for the main controls, and that allows us to have two lots of trim that's automatically going to be stored. We just set this up for the whichever switch that we want to kind of enable soaring mode so that we have this separate trim saved. Under trims, because we have T5 and T6 here as well, which are those auxiliary trims on something like a TX16S, we have the option to set global variables. Now this sounds really complicated. Global variables are just a way to save a value. So this could be a hundred, okay? And then where you would use something like that is if we go into inputs, and if we go into something like elevator, at the moment you can see the weight is set to a hundred, and as we would normally set things up, we would change that to whatever specific value we were interested in. However, you can click on source, and you can get the value from a global variable, which there it is, which is 100 and say, okay. Why could you do it that way? Well, now it means that if, and as we change flight modes, if I put different numbers in each of these places and make it so that it has rather than its own 
uh, flight mode zero value, we have our own value. We have the ability then to change these things around. So we can actually change dynamically things like could be expo, could be travel, could be anything where you actually plug in a discrete number, like where we have the weight here or offsets or whatever, you could actually have it change dynamically via the flight mode. So, okay, is that really exciting? Well, in a basic setup, no, it's not. But the other last cool thing is in the mixes, one of the things that you may have noticed if you've been playing with it is in elevator, you can see here this modes bit. These are all of the eight flight modes. So if rather than you had maybe, I don't know, a couple of different weights so that you had one um, elevator, let's uh, duplicate that. Maybe this one was going to have a weight of, I don't know, we could do it this way instead. Um, let's say 80. Okay. Then normally the way we do it is we would assign a switch to go between the two. So this one here, we would have some kind of switch that would turn this on or off and the other one. However, we can do it really easily. What we can do is we say that this first one is only available in things like the basic flight mode, which is, I think we called it normal. Okay, there we go. This one is available in every other flight mode. So now you can see that as I change the flight mode, and again, I change the flight mode by deciding a switch or something to switch between them. As I switch between them, not only am I gonna able to do things like have a different thing displayed on the screen. So if I just simulate the radio and show you what that looks like, there it says normal at the bottom. Uh, I used to use those things all the time to let me know which mode I was in. You can also decide to have different trims on different modes that can be incredibly useful. And then finally, we have the option to use global variables if we really wanted to, to store a value and change all that stuff dynamically. And that means that rather than have to have really, really complicated things set up in stuff like mixes with lots of changing values and configurations, we can all do it through flight modes and just pick the flight mode with one simple switch. So hopefully that explains it a little bit easier. Flight mode, again, is not something you're probably going to bump into and start messing around with until you find you have a need for it. And usually it's when your mixes tab starts to look incredibly complicated and you realize there's an easy way to, for, to kind of keep all this information in one spot and to have one thing do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.